Hey, how's it going? It's Stephen here from understandingaudio.com and welcome to part four of my mini series on how to produce music with Expand. In case you're just tuning in, the idea behind this video series is to show you how you can create great sounds with either stock or free virtual instruments. So this is part four and if you haven't seen the earlier parts yet, part one of this series showed you how to make a nice modern drum beat with Expand. Part two helps you create some complementary chord and pad sounds to develop a nice sense of harmony in your production. Part three was all about producing bass sounds that also complement and cut through the mix. And this is part four. In this video, we're going to be talking about lead synths. All right, I'm going to pick up right where I left off at the end of part three in the bass video. In parts one and two, I converted all of my instrument tracks over to audio, but you'll see here that the bass track is still in MIDI. Now, a lot of the time I like to have my bass tracks in mono. So to take the same approach as what I did with the rest of the instruments, you would create a new mono audio track and drag the MIDI down onto this audio track and get this MIDI bass sound. And this should sound the same as the bass instrument track. So all we did different this time was create a mono track, which is called bass, instead of creating stereo tracks and drag the MIDI information down. Now this could prove slightly problematic if you've got a very rich stereo instrument that you're trying to sum down to mono this way. So be careful about summing your stereo instrument tracks down to mono in this way because you'll notice that straight away there's an increase in the loudness of that mono track. In this case I'm happy enough to just drag that down and I'm happy with the sound of the mono bass. So I always color code my bass blue and there it is. Before we get into talking about the lead synth parts, if you've enjoyed this video series so far, then hit the like button below this video and subscribe to the channel. Just by hitting that like button alone, you do a lot for my channel and for my website and you really help all these videos get seen by people who want to see them. Now I no longer need this bass instrument track, so I'll hide it and make it inactive. Close this down and close this down. Let's move this below the last instrument we recorded. And now I want to start working on my synth lead part, so I'm going to create a new stereo instrument track. So once again, I'll come down and open up an instance of Expand. And what I'm thinking about putting in to complement the parts that we have so far is a part that's building and rising, kind of playing arpeggiated notes. But I don't want to use an arpeggiator and I want to play them in myself, so I'm going to look for a soft synth to do that. So a soft lead of some kind will do. How about this vintage synth lead? And as a bit of a refresher, I'm just going to play back what I have so far. All right, so I've got a rough idea of what I want to play in. So I'm going to come down here and arm the track. Unmute the click track. Start from zero. All right, let's give this a go. Let's see if I can get this in the mix a little bit better. a couple of notes that just aren't quite long enough that I'm going to fix. So let me do that in the MIDI editor. Okay, now I can go back to adjusting the level, make sure it sits in the mix okay.
Great, I'm happy with that. Right, so now I've got a nice arpeggiated soft lead part on the go. I want to add in something a little bit harder. So let me duplicate this track, get rid of the MIDI information and come in and try and find a hard lead part. So let's go with Robo Brass just to start with, see what we can work with on this. I'll just arm the track back to the start and let's see if I can find a part. All right, so that part I played in is fairly average. I think I can improve upon it. And I also think that the sound is not quite right. So let me just randomly pick another sound to go with. Um, let's try the one below. Let's try Sledge. And let me re-record another part and see if it's any better. Okay, that sounds a lot better to me, so let me play that back. All right, so I just want to adjust the duration and the attack of some of these notes. So let me do that. Let me play this back. Great, so let me disarm this track. All right, now for this last part, I'm gonna get a little bit experiment, a little bit wild. So I'm gonna take the input quantize off, which is a bold move. And I hope that I can play the part right. So once again, we just duplicate this instrument track. Delete what was already played in and change the instrument. So I'm gonna go with another hard lead and Distortia. <laughs> Let's go with that one. All right, let me give this part a go. All right, so how did I do? So there are bits that need fixing. Just the grid to make it a little bit smaller so you can see what I'm doing properly. Just getting these to start in the right place.
All right, so that's still a bit sloppy, still a bit untidy, but I'm not going to go in and fix every MIDI note because it sounds the way I want it to sound. Now, at this point, I'm not mixing, but I do want to get the balance of those three synths sounding a little bit better with the rest of the elements, so I'm going to go in and level them a little bit better now. So I'm going to mute the second two that I recorded and just get the first one balanced in right first. All right, so that actually wasn't that far off, so it's the other two synths that are obviously causing the problem. So let's bring in the next one. Yeah, that's too much. Alright, so let's bring in this last one. Okay, so I think that's a really good level for this part. Now I mentioned I'm not getting into the mixing of this just yet because there's still quite a bit left to do in the production of this. In part five, I'm gonna get into the arrangement of this. So I'm not gonna have all of these parts playing over each other all at once. I wanna spread it out a little bit more, make a bit of a song out of it, and then I'll be able to show you everything that I did to achieve that. Part five is gonna show you that arrangement and it's also gonna pad out the transitions between the various sections of the song. And I'll show you some other very cool and exciting ways of using Expand. Now I did mention the mixing of this track and as you can see I'm kind of leveling things off as I go as part of the production so that it mixes itself further down the line. And how I'm deciding on the levels of these individual tracks is all based on my taste, it's all subjective. And how I came to develop my taste was by listening to a lot of music and I'm sure you do the same as well but I want you to be able to use the music that you listen to and the references that you have for mixing to the best of your ability. So as a thank you for watching this video and for liking and subscribing, I want to give you something free today. It's my free guide at the one hack that guarantees a unique pro sounding mix. And in that guide, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your taste as a musician, a mixing engineer and a producer to maximize your mixing results. I'm going to take you from the very start of the mixing process all the way through to the end using this one hack. And I absolutely do guarantee you it's going to get you a unique professional sounding mix every single time you mix. So to get great results like all of my subscribers over at understandingaudio.com, all you have to do to download the free guide today is go to getpromixes.com. Again, if you like this video and you're enjoying this series, you're getting a lot out of it, hit the thumbs up button on this video. It really helps out the channel and do not forget to subscribe so that you can see when part five is available. Again, if you haven't seen parts one and three so far, go and watch them first. Watch this video, add in part five, and then you've got the complete series. You're then in a great place to produce music with Expand or the stock or free instrument of your choice within your DAW. I'm gonna be back with part five very soon, so subscribe, put your notifications on so you can see when that's available. And in the meantime, keep having fun making great music.